Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. And I am seeing you once again with lecture 14 of novel 2, that is modern novel. Today's talk is going to be very interesting because we are going to conclude two of our novels that we have studied so far, a portrait of the artist as a young man and to the lighthouse. Why am I bringing both of these novels together to conclude, so, you, so to connect James Joyce and Virginia Woolf as two prominent and significant writers of the 20th century and see what are those common themes and structures we could understand in the writings by both of these um, uh, significant writers of the uh, era that we are studying. So, in today's talk we will try to cover uh, both of these novel, novels, A Portrait of, uh, of a Man by James Joyce and To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf and um, since it's been a while that you studied the novel uh, A Portrait, I will try to give you a recap by giving you the narrator of the novel and point of view conveyed in, in, that, in that story, what was the tone, protagonist and major conflict about the na narrative and what was the rising action, climax and falling ac action of the story. And I will also um, touch upon the major themes, motives, and symbols presented in the novel. However, in the later section of the of the discussion, we will we will bring in the may bring in the questions, the critical reflections that make us think both the writers simul about about both the writers simultaneously. So let's start with the first section of the novel, where I will try to make you recall about the very first novel. So the narrator is anonymous. We know that and speaks with the same voice and tone that Stephen might. You must be able to recall now that Stephen is the main character of the story, a protagonist of the story. Although most of a portrait of the artist as a young man is in the third person, the point of view is Stephen's as Stephen develops as a person. The language and perspective of the narrative narration develop with him. We see everything in the manner in which he thinks and feels it. At the very end of the novel, there is a brief section in which the story is told through Stephen's diary entries. The section is in the first person, the use of stream of consciousness. So, as far as the technique is concerned, the narrative technique is concerned, now you can see uh, both a significant writer as uh, as as the uh, um, for the for the utility of the stream of consciousness how James Joyce utilizes this th is this technique in his writing and how Virginia Woolf's entire writing relies on this uh, writing device the tone is the tone of the portrait is generally serious and introspective especially during Stephen's several heartfelt epiphanies. Stephen Dedalus, Stephen struggles to uh, decide whether he should be loyal to his family, his church, his nation, or his vocation as an artist. On the other hand, uh, as we recently finished our novel by Virginia Woolf, you will see that the, the ground of the plot is entirely different in both of these novels. It's, uh, James talks mostly about nation, and religion and he talks about um, although he touches the loyalty to f towards family as well but here Virginia's writing is entirely about uh, domestic life family relations self and human being although we do have bits of religion and and um, uh, Definitely this, this theme of beauty and art is uh, relevant to both of these writings. So, uh, the rising and falling action and the climax, we know that uh, Stephen's encounters with prostitutes, his emotional reaction to Father Arnold's um, hellfire sermons, his temporary devotion to religious life, his realization that he must confront the decision of whether to center his life around religion or art makes us understand the rise, rising action of the story. And, and the climax of the story tells that Stephen's decision in chapter 4 to reject the religious life in favor of the life of an artist eventually. And then the following action will cover Stephen's enrollment in university college where he gradually forms his aesthetic theory 
Stephen's distancing of himself from his family, church, and nation, development of a human being. Um, the major themes of the novel involved the development of individual consciousness that we also find in Virginia's uh, novel, the pitfalls of religious extremism, the role of the artist, Again, Regina, Regina's um, theme, the need for Irish autonomy is, however, the religion, the use, the, the use of religious theme and, uh, and, and patriotism is something that stands only with, uh, more prominently, prominently, uh, prominently with James Joyce. Now, as far as use of motives and symbols is concerned, music, flight, prayers, secular songs, and Latin phrases were the motives um, mostly used by James. And green and maroon, the symbols of colors, Emma, the girl on the beach, are the two symbolic references that the writer uses in a portrait. So, um, uh, giving you this feed, quick feedback, uh, quid, uh, quick um, um, recall of the story now makes me take you towards uh, a critical reflection discussion based on critical reflections which will involve both the, the stories, both the novels by James Joyce and Virginia Woolf. Um, <clears throat> some questions um, that would demand your attention uh, we are going to discuss in this section. The very first one is from, from a portrait by James Joyce. Are the problems experienced by characters in the book universal or do they seem uniquely Irish? Well, many of the events of this novel are seen through a haze of murky dis discontent. Um, why am I, uh, another reason that I forgot mentioning of, of giving you this recap important is to enable you to appear for your midterms and because these both are going to be your midterms preferences so uh, the important questions are to be discussed again at this stage. Joyce poses dis dis dissatisfaction as a necessity of the developing artist. <coughs> Our protagonist is unha protagonist's unhappiness with his setting, his family <coughs> and most of all himself are fundamental to his eventual transformation from ob observant child to blooming writer. Unlike he realizes that his vocation is to become a writer, um, he feels aimless, alone and uncertain. However, we get the feeling that he could never arrive at, at his conclusion without undergoing his period of profound dissatisfaction. It is this lingering sense of mal malcontent that forces Joyce's character to confront his personal anxiety and uncertainties in order to get past them. Second very important question that demands your attention is Joyce often pinpoints the inability of language to truly express meaning. If you are able to recall, this, this theme relates us to um, modern drama Pygmalion by Bernard Shaw. He, how does Stephen approach this problem? And this again is a theme of uh, waiting for Godot, uh, inability of language um, or ability of language. Anyways, how James deals with this um, idea. Stephen fixation on language is what alerts us to um, his artistic inclination from the very beginning of the novel. Both Joyce and his protagonist demonstrate a deep fascination with the purely aesthetic elements of language. Sometimes elements like repetition, rhythm and, and rhyme take over the narrative completely. This demonstrates the novel's stance on communication. Uh, so we understand that communication is one important theme of 20th century that you may not only see in as a theme of novels, but it, it will also stand as importantly in dramas and other genres of literature as you will find them in narratives. This theme highlights the arbitrary and sometimes meaningless ways in which language works and doesn't work. You will find that 
as a as a as a medium or carrier of memories what has been taken by lily brisco into the lighthouse is art is um, is not language so this dominance of art over language is one of the major themes of 20th century while the goal of language is to clarify and enlighten it doesn't always succeed and is often misused Joyce and many of his modernist colleagues, especially T.S. Eliot, were very concerned with the failure of language to successfully communicate ideas. They find it quite a vulnerable medium. And another important aspect to be discussed is in his heavily religious phase, um, here I'm referring to James Joyce's portrait, does Stephen think of religion in any social way? That is, does he consider its role in a broader community or is his faith purely personal and self-centered? Now, we are discussing the dominance of theme of religion in 20th century and how James Joyce puts it in front to make the readers understand religion as, as, an, as, an, as an idea of extremism and religious, religion as an idea of, um, of knowledge that directs social way for human being. So let's see how he deals with this theme in his story. Marx famously wrote that religion is a kind of drug constructed to keep the massive bovine cow-like and contended, chewing their cud comfortably and not confronting the true nature of life. That's what Marx says. Joyce delivers a similarly cynical and unflinchingly critical picture of religion in Portrait of the Artist. Our hero, albeit in a, in a markedly uncow like and intensely um, cerebral fashion, also latches on to religion as a system of definite explanation. However, religion is rejected as a solution to life's unanswerably que unanswerable questions, both by Joyce and by Stephen, who realizes that life is not that simple and that the strict rules and regulations of the church can't explain everything. The book implies that no religious doctrine, Catholic or otherwise, can provide universal solutions. And furthermore, that dogma often limits the possibilities of human accomplishment. Here you will see uh, James Joyce confronting this image of uh, religion in 20th century, and that then again reflects in the writers of, in the following writers who would who would be the writers of the following century. That uh, slowly and gradually the theme of religion takes aside, and the theme of uh, humanism comes in front. And now, uh, does the figure of Daedalus, the old father, old artificer, ultimately replace God for Stephen? Well, this choice might raise some eyebrows. You wouldn't be alone if you wanted to nervously avoid our gaze and say, Hey, um, I know you are trying to be thorough and everything, but it's spirituality kind of uncomfortably similar to the last theme you discussed about religion. And that's that's our cue to, share, to stare you down and say, yeah, right, stop being so uh, reductive in your thinking and we need to discuss this idea. One of the transformations our protagonist undergoes is a, is a shift from zealous, super disciplined belief in Catholic doctrine to a more unrestricted, self-created sense of spirituality that's closely inter intertwined with his drive to create art. Spiritually is not limited to the, to the worship of any one religion, in fact, or even of any specific God. Rather, there is something profoundly fulfilling and potentially redemptive in the worship of art and beauty. I hope you are able to uh, bring the links down now. So, moving on to The Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. If To The Lighthouse is a novel about the search of meaning in life, as done by James Joyce, 
how do the characters present created by wolf conduct their search are they successful in finding an answer do we get an answer although all the characters engage themselves in the same quest for meaningful experience the three main characters have vastly different approaches mr ramsey's search is intellectual he hopes to understand the world and his place in it by working at philosophical and reading books and here in this small clip you will find that how nancy reading a book and being interrupted by andrew the suitor um, gives her thoughts away let you understand how she looks at life and what meanings she drives from life again lily's monologue with while painting mrs ramsay with james discussing um, limited potential of canvassing the all by the medium of paint is another philosophy of of finding meaning of life i wish i could capture all the the i would say the capacity uh, she she would want to match with the capacity of life and then conversation between michael and uh, uh carmichael regularity of life and measurement of love pains of individuals how each individual look at life is what we are going to observe in this clip from the movie to the lighthouse let's watch <laughs> Nancy? Are we being chaperoned by a blue stocking? Andrew and I are to meet father this afternoon. How dreadful. No, it isn't. I enjoy it. Education continues throughout the summer, Mr. Ray. At a fairly gentle pace, but it continues. I think this chaperoning is a bit silly. Don't you? drive everyone away from the fields the the neighboring fields so that no one dare dares no one will challenge them or disturb their security you're groping in the dark and Shall I see if they're on their way? Nancy is always a bad timekeeper.
Let me take it off for you. Is he pacing about? I don't know what you mean by pacing about. Your father's been working on his Cardiff lectures all day. That I do know. Oh. Yes. Oh dear. Forward the light brigade. Was there a man afraid? Was there a man this way? Not that a soldier knew someone had blundered. It's dreadfully bad. There must be a structure in a painting. As strong as a mold, so that I can pour in everything. The sun, the summer house, and the earwig. And poor Rayleigh's flame of love. And the miseries of little James. Oh, pour it all in, Briscoe. What have I got so far? I'm a donor and child in the modern manner. Will they be finished in time, Mother? Well, let me measure them against you. Come on, James. Help your mother. Let me see. Mr. Sawley's son is... Well, he'll be eight this winter, so... Oh. Still too short. Will we leave early in the morning? If it's fine, my darling. If it's fine, you'll go. Ideas don't come easily, Augustus. You can't just sit there like St. Francis and have them perch on your shoulder. A good idea, a truly great perception, is like the wildest of animals. It must be hunted in silence with absolute concentration. You have done that, Michael. But so long ago, those days when I used to... Oh, long walks in the countryside to nowhere in particular. Finishing up at some inn or other. Ah, spent at a scrub table with no interruptions, yes. Then I glimpsed a truth or two. But too much ease, I lost my way. And I planted the nettles myself. Why do I surround myself with people who... <laughs> the damnable domestic round. The children, Augustus, demands, demands, demands. They love their regularities, the rhythms of our life together. So it must be every morning, so a kiss good night, so every day, so every month, so every year. Years and years and years. We are all issued with our measure of love. You had a great measure, Michael. Much more than many of us. It's all gone, Augustus. All gone. I will not reach the summit. He should be copying the pictures. He likes cutting them out, Michael. I see no point in it. Please, Lord. I shall write to Cardiff and decline the invitation. Oh, my dear. You mustn't do that. There are better men, well, younger men. I have nothing to say, Caroline. Michael, each lecture you give is a great success. Mr. Tansley says so. Mr. Tansley? Who is he? 
The men whose approval I want will not give it to me. We'll be gone tomorrow. What? The lighthouse. You did say you could go to the lighthouse. Why hold out hopes to the boy? The wind is set in the west and the barometer is dropping. But it could change. Things could change. There will be no trip to the lighthouse tomorrow. children grow fed on nothing but truth? Do they need daydreams like roses need soot? said Alice. But wife answered the fisherman, how can you be king? The fish cannot make you king. Husband, said she, say no more about it, but go and try. I will be king. There, Marie's come. We'll stop now, shall we? Don't stop. You can look at the pictures. I'll be up soon. Off you go. Well, now, this, this, this clip will give you some more voices from the character. James, I like dead things. How James look at life. Then the art of imagination is being poured into the little girl before she sleeps. How Mrs. Ramsay looks at life. How we give different meaning to life. And how a mother helps her children to create these meaning, how domestic life, how social life helps an individual to, to create that sense of creating meaning of life. And we will also see a, a small bit of um, comparison between English versus French, giving us way to understand the inner voices of characters later in that uh, clip that I want you to observe. What have you chosen for me, Cam? Yeah. Now, bed. I'll be along presently. and why I let Jasper put it here in the first place. There. Let's imagine, Cam. It's different now. A place for secrets. A home for fairies. And a nest for birds before they fly away to wonderful foreign lands. Imagine mountains, Cam. 
imagined pastures, the sound of bells and everything that's wonderful. Come think of everything you love. A little more, Mr. Carmichael. Glutton. A little more for you, Father. <laughs> yes, Mr. Rayleigh, that's right. This is a French recipe. It was my grandmother's. She was French, you know. Could only be French. English cooking is a disaster. Oh, tosh, Nancy. Everything foreign is always better in your eyes. Oh, have I offended your patriotism? Good for you, Miss Ramsey. We can do without patriotism. I didn't intend to open our door to an attack on patriotism, Mr. Tansley. It's just that I think the English overcook their vegetables. <laughs> <clears throat> what am I doing here? With this quaint family pretending to be at a banquet. And all we're doing is sitting in a shabby old house having dinner while the wind outside seems likely to take the roof off. Hark at that wind. No trip to the lighthouse tomorrow. Dear Charles is clamoring for attention. Oh, these men do so need our reign of sympathy before even their meanest flowers bloom. Uh, your father opposed the Boer War, didn't he, Charles? Lloyd George's man. There. Now bloom. Sweet brisk. His livelihood was almost destroyed. The shop is very vulnerable to public prejudice, you see. They soon take their custom elsewhere. Yes, scandalous. That's why the spread of suffrage without the spread of education is such a frightening prospect. Ruled by appeal to the law. I presume they brought their custom back in due course. Yes. As with every war, the euphoria is followed by a sense of waste. My father was then rather admired. But I carry the memory of the hatred, an aspect of my childhood I shall not forget. I have a poor memory for unhappiness. Poor Charles. What chance have you against that? Yes, they will marry. Unstoppable dear blind mother has arranged this dinner to celebrate a betrothal that only the two of them are supposed to know has happened. Mother knows. She has arranged it all. Do I wish to celebrate? Prue will be happier for a time. But what of me? Oh, Prue, what of me? We are sitting in the midst of tragedy, which will be repeated all round the world on an ever-increasing scale. I shall complete my painting. I shall move the tree. Capital will seek the cheapest labor, jumping over the boundaries to which the patriots cling. 
Here in Cornwall, a whole community of people has been decimated. Thousands of honest men have been forced to leave, to emigrate forever. There is poverty here and helplessness. Personally, I find it hard to ignore. I know many Cornishmen. They are my friends. I know of these things. It's time for the toast, mate. To another summer together. To another, another summer, summer together. Thank you, Nancy. Well, you, will, you must have seen that Mrs. Ramsey conducts her search through intuition rather than intellect. So, the quest is same, the search is same, however, the mediums are different, the channels are different. She relies on social traditions such as marriage and dinner parties to structure her experience and that's the way she finds out the meaning of life. Lily, on the other hand, tries to create meaning in her life through her painting. She seeks to unify dis de disparate elements in a harmonious whole. That's her way of finding meaning of life. While these characters experience varying degrees of success in their quest for meaning, none arrives at a, as at a revelation that fulfills the search. As an old man, Mr. Ramsey continues to be as tortured by, this, by the specter of his own mortality as he is in youth. Mrs. Ramsey achieves moments in which life seems filled with beating. But as her dinner party makes clear, they are terribly short-lived and to be finished soon. Lily too manages to wrest a moment from life and lend to it meaning and order. Her painting is a small testament to that struggle, but as she reflects while pondering the meaning of her life, there are no great revelations but only little daily miracles that one, if lucky, can fish out of the dark. Well, again, very important um, aspect that I might have uh, uh, dealt in detail in lecture 13 is compare and contrast Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey's how are they alike how are they different basically this includes the entire story and you can bring this into a nutshell well to give you some points again although Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey's love for each other and for their children is beyond doubt they both have their own way of loving their children their approach to life could not be more opposite Mrs. Ramsey's loving kind to her children, selfless and generously giving, while Mr. Ramsey is cold and socially awkward. He is stirred with his children, while, while, which causes them to hate and fear him, and he displays a neediness that makes him rather pathetic in the eyes of his guests. Despite these profound differences, however, Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey share the knowledge that all things from human life to human happiness are destined to end. That theme of transiness. It is from this sheer knowledge that their greatest differences grow, keenly aware of human mortality. Mrs. Ramsey is fueled to cultivate moments that soothe her consciousness, while Mr. Ramsey nearly collapses under the weight of this realization. So, in a nutshell, now we are about to close the chapter of To the Lighthouse, finally. It's a 1927 novel by Virginia Woolf, a landmark novel of high modernism, the text which centers on, on the Ramses and their visits to the Isle of Skye in Scotland between 1910 and 20, skillfully manipulates temporal and psychological elements. Um, it is not to forget that the lighthouse follows an extensive tradition of modernist novelists like Marcel Post and James Joyce, where the plot is secondary to philosophical introspection. The novel includes little dialogue and almost no action. Most of it is written as 
starts a stream of consciousness and observations. The novel recalls childhood, emotions and highlights adult relationships. Among the book's many tropes and themes are those of loss, subjectivity and the problems of perception. In 1998, the modern library named the lighthouse number 5 on its list of 15 on its list of the 100 best English language novels of the 20th century. In 2005, the novel was chosen by Time magazine um, as one of the 100 best English language novels from 1923 to present. To present. And um, this um, almost the climax scene picked from the novel will help you um, finish up with the story where you will find the glimpses of world war and how the loneliness could be seen and heard and Mrs. Ramsey leaves her family crying behind finishing up finishing up with it, with her idea of cherishable existence um, in a way that she could collect out of her time and change of weather from summer to winter everything gets cold everything gets finished let's have this watch When to the sessions of sweet, silent thought, I summon up remembrance of things past. I sigh the lack of many a thing I sought, and with old woes, new wail my dear time's waste. Then can I drown an eye unused to flow, for precious friends hid in death's dateless night, and weep afresh Love's long since cancelled woe, and moan the expense of many a vanished sight. Then can I grieve at grievances foregone, and heavily from woe to woe tell o'er the sad account of four bemoaned moan, which I knew pay as if not paid before. But if the while I think on thee, dear friend, all losses are restored and sorrows end. Thank you, Nancy. <clears throat> like as the waves make toward the pebbled shore, so do our minutes hasten to their end. Each changing place with that which goes before, in sequent toil, all forwards do contend. Nativity once in the main of light crawls to maturity, wherewith being crowned, crooked eclipses gainst his glory fight, and time that gave doth now his gift confound. Time doth transfix the flourish set on youth and delves the parallels in beauty's brow. Feeds on the rarities of nature's truth and nothing stands but for his scythe to mow. And yet, the times in hope my verse shall stand, praising thy word despite his cruel hand. I must paint it again.
Abandoned Lily is the word I would use. You're the one person on whom I have come to rely so heavily since I lost Caroline. I'm an old man, Lily, and it comes rather hard to learn one is to be condemned to struggle out the last years of one's life, borne down by the worries of a house to maintain and children to raise. I'm alone now, Lily. So alone. Still a damn bad timekeeper. Yes. You're late, Nancy. I'm sorry, Father. I had to see. Never you. mind. Never mind. Don't start your excuses. And don't push Cam through the door ahead of you next time. No. Well, what sort of a week have we had?
Plumber? What's this plumber? The tap in the scullery, Father. It kept dripping. It's been dripping for years. I couldn't stand it dripping any longer. Stupid child. It doesn't balance. It doesn't balance. So, large parts of Wolf's novel do not concern themselves with the objects of vision, but rather investigate the means of perception as you would have watched in this, in this clip, attempting to understand people in the act of looking. To be able to understand thought, Wolf's diaries reveal the author would spend considerable time listening to herself think observing how in which words and emotions arose in her own mind in response to what she saw. Well, this examination of uh, perception is not, however, limited to isolated inner dialogues, but also analyzed in the context of human relationships and the, the tumultuous emotional spaces crossed to truly reach another human being. Two sections of the book stand out as excellent snapshots of fumbling attempts at this crossing, the, the silent interchange between Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey as they pass the time alone together um, at the need of section one, and Lily Briscoe's struggle to fulfill Mr. Ramsey's desire for sympathy and attention as the novel closes. Now, a word about its narration and perspective. The novel lacks an, an omniscient narrator expect in the second section, Time Passes. Instead, the plot unfolds through shifting perspectives of each character's stream of consciousness. Shifts can occur even mid-sentence, and in some sense they resemble the, the, the rot rotating beam of the lighthouse itself. Unlike James Joyce, however, Wolfe does not tend to use abrupt fragments to, to represent characters' thought processing. Her method is more one of lyrical paraphrase. The lack of an omniscient narrator means that throughout the novel, no clear guide exists for the reader and that only through character development can we formulate our own opinions and views because much is morally obvious and ambiguous too. So it's, it's, a, kind of, um, it's a kind of combination of ambiguity and, uh, and things which look obvious but they have multiple meanings inside. So we need to formulate our own opinions. Whereas in part one, um, the novel is considered with illustrating the relationship between the character experiencing and the actual experience and surroundings. The second part, time passes, having no characters to relate to, presents events differently. Instead, Wolf wrote the section from the perspective of a, of a displaced narrator, unrelated to any people intending that events be seen related to time. For that reason, the narr narrating voice is unfocused and distorted providing an example of what Wolf called life as it is when we have no part in it. Well, allusions to autobiography and actual um, geography. Wolf began writing to the lighthouse partly as a, as a way of understanding and dealing with unresolved issues concerning both her um, parents and indeed, there are many similarities between the plot and her own life, real life. Her visits with her parents and family to St. Ives Cornwall, Cornwall, where her father returned, rented a house where perhaps the happiest time of Wolf's life, but when she was 13, her mother died. And like Mr. Ramsey, her father, Stephen, plunged into gloom and self-pity. Well, Wolf's sister, Vanessa Bell, wrote that reading the sections of the novel that describe Mrs. Ramsey was like um, seeing her mother raised from the dead. Their brother, Arden, 
Adrian was not allowed to go on an expedition to, um, to the lighthouse, just as in the novel, James looks forward to visiting the lighthouse and is disappointed when the trip is cancelled. Lily Briscoe's meditation on painting are a way for Wolf to explore her own creative process and also that of her painter sister since Wolf thought of writing in the same way that Lily thought of painting. Wolf's father began renting a talent house in St. Ivis in 1882 and shortly after Wolf's own birth. The house was used by the family as a family retreat during the summer of the next 10 years. The location of the main story into the lighthouse, the house on the, the Heberden Island, was formed by Wolf in imitation of talent house. Many actual features from St. Ivis Bay are carried into the story, including the gardens leading down to the sea and sea itself and the lighthouse. So although in the novel the Ramses are able to return to the house on sky after the war, the Stephens had given up talent house by that time in real. After the war, Virginia Woolf visited talent house under its new relay ownership with her sister Vanessa and Wolf repeated the journey later long after her parents were dead. All right, now a word about James Joyce, Wolf and modernism movement. Okay, um, James Joyce is an Irish writer born in 1882 and his two, two masterpieces are Lesses and the um, Debliners. The first of uh, James features, the one from which all the other ramified is paralysis. All Joyce characters are paralyzed and oppressed by a society with no um, certainties and no um, developments after the First World War and that you must would have observed in his writing a portrait. People are full of anguish also for f familiar and religious fights. Especially in Ireland where religion, religious take power on people mind. Joyce himself felt paralyzed for the same reason in the 20th century. But he escaped successfully from Dublin first to Switzerland and after to Italy, who don't do the same uh, and are his characters that trying and escape without being able to start a new life in another place. Nevertheless, they realized to have had this paralysis um, characterizing, characterizing the most important movement in his stories. Um, most of the characters in his writing has an epiphany, a kind of spiritual revelation about his psychology and personality from a simple object, fact and event that will influence his life since then. And that, that epiphany can be found in a portrait as well. Stream of Consciousness is the name of his narrative technique in which the reader follows the character's inner thought as they appear in his mind before to be analyzed by the, by the conscious and rational part of the mind. The Stream of Consciousness gives to life many points of view as, as the number of faces human being has got. In, in Freud's opinion, man has got three faces, three parts, that is, um, Ed, ego, and superego. Psychoanalysis in 20th century to study the Ed, the unconscious part, having sometimes bad results, as we can see in Mrs. Dalloway. But three are also the temporal spaces that, that Berg Bergson attributed to his new definition of time. Time is not the chronological scanning of facts, but it is a continuous flow in which the consequences of the past are in the present and the decision taken in the present determine the future. Well, uh, the death is the most important short stories of the, of the, uh, the liners, though I'm not going into detail about this, but the point was to tell you that the, 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 the total attitude of the writer can be seen uh, in each of the writing by that writer as we do in James and Wolf's stories. With the novel of Virginia Woolf, a day could cover a hundred of pages and just a hundred of pages could cover three centuries. 
and here I'm referring to Mrs. Dalloway and Orlando. She's the writer of memory and art, and she gets the memory able to steal life from time. The differences from Joyce are about the use of stream of consciousness and for the use of syntax. Joyce expresses the stream of consciousness as an intellectual analysis of human being supported by a searched and brave language, metaphors and new words. And without the uh, insertment of the third person narrator as happened in Virginia. In Virginia there is an indirect interior monologue to represent a gap between chronological and interior time. This process is supported by the use of analogies that make her writing a mixture of prose and poetry. Maybe in a more vulnerable and sensible position than Joyce. As in Joyce, there is, a, there is the epiphany in Wolf, the moment of intensity and perception that that science character's life is called moment of being. It happens in Mrs. Dalloway, for example, when Clarissa, after have heard about um, symptoms, suicide, realized that her life is rich just of good appearances and false values. She lives in a safe prison that, yes, it is safe, but that doesn't allow her to life, uh, to live a real life. And this was all the discussion for today's lecture. In today's talk, we had um, um, we, we had a quick discussion um, based on our um, recall on on a portrait by James Joyce, where we discussed the narrator and the novel, the point of views, the the plot structure, the themes and motives and symbols by James Joyce in his novel. And we try to um, discuss both the stories uh, in the light of writer's autobiography. Um, uh, to understand the, the mood they portray of the 20th century, which finished by our discussion based on Joyce and Wolfe's uh, modernism movement. This was all for today's talk. That was lecture 14. And now I'll see you in lecture 15, inshallah. Allah Hafiz.